Hey guys, welcome back to Airflow 101. This is episode four, and in this episode, we will be installing Apache Airflow on our local machine. I will be following this blog, which has been written by one of my colleague Joy Lal, and I'll also link it in the description. In this blog, he has mentioned three different ways to install Apache Airflow. The first one is a basic setup using virtual environment and pip. The second is using Docker, and the third is a Kubernetes setup using Helm. In this video, we will be installing using virtual environment and pip. In the upcoming videos, we will be moving on to the Docker setup. The first thing that I want you guys to install is Python 3. Please do not use Python 2 as it has already reached end of its life and we won't be able to run most of our coding examples on Python 2. So please move on to Python 3. Now, after setting Python 3, the next thing that we need to do is set up a Python virtual environment. For that, we will be running this command. And I will be naming the environment as env underscore airflow. This will create a Python 3 virtual environment on my desktop. Now, the next thing we need to do is activate this virtual environment. For that, please run this command. Now our environment is activated. We will be installing Apache Airflow. I will be installing the latest version of Apache Airflow, which is 1.10.9. And I'll recommend that you guys also install the latest version. This will install all the dependencies of Apache Airflow in the virtual environment and will not affect any module of your Python on your local machine. So guys, our installation is now complete. By default, Airflow comes with SQLite as database. In the upcoming videos, we will be moving on to Postgres. There are a lot of advantages that Postgres has over SQLite and we will talk about those advantages in the upcoming videos. Also, by default, Airflow comes with sequential executor. If you don't know what an executor is, you don't need to worry. We will be talking about that in the next video. For now, you just need to know that executor is a process that executes the task. And by default, Airflow comes with sequential executor. And in the upcoming videos, we will be moving on to the celery executor. If you want to know the difference between sequential and celery executor, I recommend going through this blog in which Joy has perfectly explained the difference between these two executors. Now, after installation, you need to initialize the database. And for that, you need to run this command, airflow init db. This will initialize the SQLite database. Airflow also creates a folder by the name of Airflow in your home directory. Let's have a look at that folder. In this folder, we will have our database our configuration file and a folder to have all our logs. Now we need to create a directory by the name of DAX. This is the directory in which we will store all our DAC files and Airflow will read all the DAC files from this directory. Now in order to use Airflow with SQLite and sequential executor, we need to start two things, the web server and the scheduler. So the command to run the web server is Airflow web server. And you can see it says using sequential executor. The web server will be available on port 8080. So let's have a look at that. This is our Airflow web server and it says this scheduler does not appears to be running. So let's start the scheduler as well. Make sure to activate the virtual environment whenever you want to execute an Airflow command. Otherwise, your system won't be able to recognize it. And now we'll run Airflow scheduler. And you can see it is searching for DAG files in the folder that we created. And 
your Airflow is now up and running. In the next video, we will be talking about various components of Apache Airflow and I'll try to give you guys a brief overview of the architecture. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next video.